Welcome to the Joy of Music. Today we have a very special presentation we want to share with you. It's Gospel at the Symphony with Edwin Hawkins. I have here with me now the man that makes this music come alive, one of the greatest performers in the gospel field today, Edwin Hawkins. Edwin, welcome to the Joy of Music. Thank you. It's good to be here. And thank you for taking the time to share your talents and your message of faith with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. We'll be talking a little later in the program about your life and your music and how you got started. All right. And of course, your faith in God. Okay. Love but to now share I that. think we ought to hear some music. Okay, why not? And now, Gospel at the Symphony with Edwin Hawkins.
church without a spot or blemish. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the future's my sister. I tell you what, this is an up tempo song. And if you feel like it, I would prefer that you did. Clap your hands along with us, all right? All right? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
been listening to Gospel at the Symphony with Edwin Hawkins. Edwin, your music is fantastic. Thank you. And obviously, God gave you the gift of song. That's right. How early in your life did you know this? Uh, I remember my mother talking about discovering that I could play Silent Night at the age of five. There was a school assembly um, at the grammar school that I attended in Oakland. And she came in to her surprise. She found that I could play a little bit. Uh -huh. And from that point on, of course, she encouraged me and, and the rest of the family to go ahead and, and um, uh, to do the music thing that we wanted to do. Was this a dream that you had as a little boy to be a singer, to be a pop singer or a famous singer? Not at all. As children, our family, there were eight children. Eight? Yes. <laughs> and uh, as children, we just had fun gathering around the piano and singing and playing. Now, before I could play, better than I was playing. <laughs> My mother played for us as we started singing together as, as a Hawkins family just around the local area. We were at my brother's church. I'm passing a lot of different things that took place right. in, in, in the life. Um, church called Love Center, small church at my brother pastors. We were getting uh, preparing for rehearsal on a Thursday evening and we were having prayer. And while in prayer, I saw this vision I know it sounds very mysterious and very deep and all of, of that. Of a great but, orchestra. You know, <laughs> of an orchestra. Is that right? And we were performing with this orchestra. And uh, when we said amen, I just was so excited. I immediately got to say, guess what, choir? I said, we're going to perform with an orchestra. I said, I don't know who it's going to be, which one it's going to be. But I said, we'll just start making some calls like tomorrow morning. And we did. Now, had you started uh, recording and, and had you started your singing career? Then? Oh, yes, yes. We had done some uh -huh. things by that time. In fact, uh, if I probably should back up to let you know something about how Oh Happy Day started, because again, that is a miracle within itself. That was recorded not for commercial purposes at all. It was done on a two-track machine in a church, a home model machine, and God created a miracle. You know, just the results of that, you know, it, it, it sold well over a million here in this country. Is that your and, own uh, arrangement of Oh Happy yes, Day? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. there's another one in most hymnals, which is a, another melody mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is another oh, melody. Oh Happy so Day, I, when Jesus took my sins away. Right, right. So uh -huh. I say that I'm the recreator of that song. Well, you really did a great <laughs> job of it. Well, thank I you. I love that piece. It thank just you. goes over and over in your mind, Oh Happy Day, yeah. Oh Happy Day. Yeah. Well, Edwin, it seems with all your talent that you could have been a real pop star. Mm -hmm. Why would you choose the gospel field? Um, I happen to really love gospel music from a child, and, 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 and it's probably because I was programmed, you know, <laughs> if I can use that word. I was programmed as a kid. When I realized that I was existing in the world or in the home where my mother and father raised me, there was gospel music. Mm -hmm. But not was there only gospel. Her brother was a jazz musician. My father liked country and western music, so we got a chance to hear different varieties of, of, right. uh, of music. And, uh, but gospel was just something that, that we learned to love. Uh, but aside from that, when I committed my life to Christ, it just became a thing that I wanted to make a part of my ministry. Um, and sharing with some people, a friend of mine on the way to the airport as uh, we were coming here, uh, some different feelings about that because you, you don't become what you are overnight and, and, and uh, you start to learn about yourself, you, you learn other things about Christ, you learn things about Christianity, you, think, you learn things about Christian Christianity. Uh, in the airport I ran into a young man we just started talking about religion mm -hmm. and, and Christianity and he said well you must be very very religious and, 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 and feel that you have to walk the straight and narrow. 
And I said, well, I've never responded and thought about the t distinction between religion mm -hmm. and Christianity, mm -hmm. and not American Christianity, mm -hmm. but Christianity as Christ taught it. Right. And religion, as we know it today, are so different, because religion comes from man. Christianity came from Christ. You know, and they're so right. different. Because religion totally different. Is, is a thing where we've added a lot of rules, traditions, and customs to make us feel worthy, and we're still not worthy. It's, mm. it's the grace of God that, that we're, what we're, we're what we are, you know, not religion. Because without religion, I can be a Christian. That's right. You know, and many people um, fail to see that or understand it. They just lump the two right together. Is there anything, Edwin, that has happened in your uh, concert life or in your music <clears throat> life that is especially stands out in your mind? <laughs> Perhaps a humorous event or something uh, very meaningful uh, in a spiritual sense? Immediately I think of uh, the comical thing that I can talk about, the spiritual thing that happened that took place. Uh, we've toured maybe 10 different countries in Europe. And one of the, the highlights for me was uh, the MEDAM, they call it. It's a big musical convention that involves record companies and artists from all over the world. And it's done in, in Cannes, France, on the Mediterranean. Some people call it Cannes, some of it's Cannes. Um, it's a very formal occasion. And we were maybe middle ways a program, and we began to sing. And of course, you know how gospel music just gets so involved with the rhythm and the lyrics and the singing and all of that. Uh, people that were dressed in long formal wear, black tuxedos mm -hmm. and furs and all that got so excited when we were singing. The men were jumping on stage and the women that had on furs took their furs off and threw them on stage and their, and their husbands or men would help them get on stage. They wanted to just be close to us to feel all this energy sure. that was coming from us. They mm -hmm. were there and they were clapping and trying to sing with us and it was great. It was great. And then I think about Holland is, is one of the places where people start off being very, very reserved mm -hmm. as you're performing, and they're very polite and they applaud, mm -hmm. you know, uh, at the end of the concert. But before the end of the concert, everybody's on their feet and they're just huddled around the stage, and they'll get so excited they start to climb on again, you know, and, and just want to be close to that mm -hmm. feeling and that spirit that's <laughs> going on up there on stage. Uh, so rewarding. It is well, so rewarding because they have such an appreciation in Europe for, for gospel music or for American music or black right. music that we don't have here. We appreciate it, but we sort of take it for granted. But it also says something for the spirit that you have. Well, and, and what you're what you're saying to those people out there. Yeah, it really yeah, gets to them. Yeah. It communicates. And they know, even though they may not understand every lyric, they know it's the gospel of Jesus Christ, and and that what they're feeling, they may not be able to explain it, but it is the spirit of God that they feel, and. Like, not like any other spirit or any other feeling that you've ever felt, to be able to feel the presence of God when you're moving and you're singing and you're doing what He wants you to do, that joy, that excitement, you know, nothing like it. Who writes your arrangements or are you the writer of your own pieces? I do most of the compositions, yes. Uh -huh. One of your pieces that I really love is I Need to Pray. Did you write that one? Yes, I did. Uh, that, you know, there's so much repetition in that, and I think it's so good. Mm -hmm. The greatest composers of all time use repetition mm -hmm. as, a, as a compositional uh, way of, of somehow making the melody come alive in your mind. And I, whenever I hear I Need to Pray, mm -hmm. you sing it over and over, and it goes over in my mind every day, and then you begin to think, I do need to pray. Yeah. I need to pray. It's just terrific.
lady from the group Innovations, the Gospel Innovations. Mrs. Miss or Mrs. <laughs> Loretta Jones, help me love her. This is a song that you should remember. It's a song that Edwin recorded about 1969. The Lord blessed it to go all over the world for everybody to hear. It's a song called Oh Happy Day. Come on, get with it. 